Hello and welcome back to Cycling Tracking 2. Today we're monitoring three systems around the world, Tropical Depression Claudette, a system in the Atlantic that could form towards the end of the runs, and a system in the Western Pacific Invest 94L. Right now we're going to take a look at Tropical Depression Claudette. It is our main thread. It's currently over land over the US uh, right now in Alabama, actually. It'll move into Georgia uh, later on, uh, just in a few hours or so, and it might even regenerate as a tropical storm in the next sort of uh, 12 to 24 hours over South Carolina, maybe even into North Carolina. We've already got tropical storm warnings and watches in effect for the South Carolina coastlines and the North Carolina coastline, which is entirely in, an, uh, in a tropical storm warning. Then the storm will likely intensify more to around 50 miles an hour, move up towards uh, into in the Gulf Stream, and then make landfall on uh, either Nova Scotia or Newfoundland as an extra tropical system. So not much of a threat there, but still, again, could be a Gulf Stream tropical storm like Tropical Storm Bill. Is the IR satellite imagery from the storm uh, it has been putting up a fight. It is struggling due to high levels of wind shear and also some dry air in the area. Uh, it's moving quite slow. The convection itself is very slow, which means that we're going to be uh, seeing some very heavy rainfall. And we're also seeing some very heavy uh, thunderstorms, some isolated but very ma uh, large thunderstorms moving ashore in the Florida Panhandle region, which will be causing some very heavy rainfall in that area. There's also some scattered thunderstorms around the system, but the main core isn't harboring too much rain. The main threat right now is sort of outside of the system, and we could be seeing tropical storm force winds uh, generate fairly soon from this system. All right, so here's the ECMWF uh, wind run uh, for now, 6Z this is. Um, as we start getting into sort of the uh, later hours of Sunday, we can see that storm start to regenerate in North Carolina, that defined area of low pressure starting to develop, and winds offshore will be approaching 30 knots as well. By uh, early Monday morning, we should be seeing the storm approach the North Carolina coastline and start exiting it, again producing winds of near tropical storm status, 32, 33 knots in there, uh, which is very close to tropical storm status. By midday Monday, we're looking at a uh, tropical, uh, tropical storm forming with 34 knot winds, and this is just offshore from Cape Hatteras in North Carolina. This has been fairly consistent. The GFS is also on board with this. And then uh, by late Monday, we should be seeing the storm start to supercharge its speed in the Gulf Stream and pick up some more intensity as well and define itself a little bit better. And then sort of as we enter Tuesday morning into Tuesday afternoon, we should be seeing this storm start to turn post-tropical. Not really getting too strong, but then again, it could uh, pack a small punch uh, for uh, with winds in North Carolina. And there might be a surge problem as well. I think the, uh, the uh, National Hurricane Center has up to three feet of storm surge mark. So I'll have a look at the national, uh, the NAM model actually. Um, Georgia right now uh, is where the storm is uh, currently located according to the NAM model. Now the NAM is quite high res and it will give us a good image of the storm. It just tends to overestimate wind speed uh, wise because it is a mesoscale model. Defined low pressure system isn't evident but we still have those tropical storm force winds um, so you might be able to get away with calling this a tropical storm. By mid Monday we're looking at a defined low pressure system start to develop and it will Will then be steered and enter a more sort of high shear environment and be blasted up towards the subtropics, never really getting that defined low level, uh, low pressure center and moving sort of where that area of low pressure will be, it will be moving uh, mainly uh, parallel to the US coastline, the US Gulf uh, Stream coastline. And that's also what the HWF model has been saying until the most recent run. So that's interesting there. There is actually consistency on that front. Sea so surface temperatures right now in the North Atlantic are phenomenal uh, for this time of the year. We've got a pocket of 27, maybe even 28 degrees where this storm is expected to exit. And 26 degree isotherm extending quite far north, almost to 40 degrees north of latitude. But then those sea temperatures will fall off a cliff and the convection will wane and the storm will die uh, once it moves pretty much north of 40 degrees north and then it will start its post-tropical transition. So we could be seeing a peak of around 30 miles an hour from this system. Right, now we're going to go and take a look at the Atlantic uh, towards the end of the run. Now this is Monday uh, the 28th, so this will be late Sunday into early Monday where we're expecting this storm. Now the GFS has been very consistent on this for the past sort of five to six runs. Uh, Timing-wise, location has sort of been dotted around 
around the Gulf of Mexico, but we could be seeing another tropical storm here. This will pick up the name Danny if it does form. 37 knot winds and a sort of elongated area of low pressure, but you could almost get away with calling that a tropical storm um, as it approaches Cuba. I don't think it will be named at this point, but then it really starts to define its low pressure system. And like all very early season tropical storms, it is quite an easterly based system. So the worst conditions will be towards the east of the system. And as we start getting into late Monday and then into Tuesday, we'll see the storm define itself a little bit better and then start approaching the Florida coastline as a very much defined uh, system as it exits Cuba. But again, still very prominently towards the east of the storm, northeast, uh, which is very typical of these early season storms. But heavy rainfall is very likely as a result of this system. And it could pack a punch if it does actually make landfall and coming quite close to the Florida uh, Peninsula with winds of around 40 to 45 knots. All right, let's take this um, model back in time. This is four runs ago. Now, the GFS had started showing a swirl um, about four runs previous to this. So it's been showing a system for about eight runs now, which is fairly consistent for the GFS uh, standards, especially early season. But this is where it starts to get quite defined. Now, this is our 210, so June 29. Um, we start to see this storm actually develop just off the Utah Peninsula. And you can see it does actually... Oh, no, that's the latest run, sorry. Um, the Tropical Tidbits page is interesting when it comes to that but it, this run has taken the storm through the Yucatan Peninsula. And the latest run actually has it forming in the same spot then taking it into the Gulf of Mexico and doing some swirls down where Claudette started to form and making landfall again as a tropical storm but then we get another storm here. Now this actually looks to be more significant and I haven't noticed this one here so sorry if it does sound quite impromptu but the latest run suggesting a tropical storm that might even approach hurricane status down there and then tropical uh, low here but this is very far out. This is long range stuff we're talking about. So quite inconsistent um, we could be looking at here. Um, we just need to see really if this actually does show up for the next uh, few runs. If it does um, then we could be seeing a system but yeah the previous run wasn't showing it and then the run before that also wasn't showing it although increased convection and thunderstorm activity over here. So it has been semi-consistent um, this one here but definitely not consistent towards this likes here. So we're definitely looking out for tropical activity towards the end of the model run uh, as we would expect as we start to enter July. Um, but at this stage, nothing consistent, nothing set in stone. We need to be watching the Gulf of Mexico, though, as always. Now, I'm going to uh, take you guys over to the Western Pacific right now, um, as we do have Invest 94W over in the Western Pacific, which is actually a, tro a likely tropical storm. So here's a system here starting to develop by the GFS, and by sort of hour 72, it does start to organize significantly and gain its tropical storm force winds in about 108 hours. Then it moves over... Uh, to Japan as a weak tropical storm turns extra tropical and recurves away. But the GFS has been showing this as quite a lot stronger. And we'll take you over to have a little look at it right now. Uh, the GFS, some of the GFS ensembles, GEFS ensembles, actually take this up to uh, above typhoon status. And you can see it here, 990 millibars in 140 hours. That would be category one status around maybe high end tropical storm. But you can see a lot of these red lines, which is between 970 and 980 millibars. That is definitely into the typhoon status maybe even approaching category two if you're in the lower end of that 970s uh, there. So the interesting stuff, Japan could definitely be sustaining a tropical storm uh, or, trop uh, or typhoon hit. We need to be watching, but again, it is quite long range, so we do need to be cautious with making decisions. Anyway, so it's the latest that I have on all these storms. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like, and if you want to show more support, most of you can subscribe. That's all for me, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.